Hello and welcome back to Skyrim with me, Chris, otherwise known as Silent8472, where in our last episode we became a fully fledged werewolf and we went and took the fight to the Silver Hand. Unfortunately, Skewer was lost and we're definitely not wearing his armour because it was better than what we had, but oh well. Um, today, however, instead of heading off and continuing the companion's path with retrieval to get the next card of Wuthrad. I actually want to do the way of the voice because I've got what I wanted out of the companions which was to become a fully fledged werewolf and now I want to continue pursuing the power of the voice. So to do that we need to press on with the main quest a little bit and do some work with the greybeards. So that's where we're going to be heading today. Unfortunately Hythrothgar is a fair whack away so we are going to wind up walking and so it might be a bit of a cross-country episode today um, but we'll see where we go I've also just noticed we did have a level up as well shall we we start to run a bit short on magic so let's just bump that up a little bit still not want to get any oh we've got a new one in conjuration Mystic binding bound weapons do more damage perfect and then we need to get up to 30 for soul trap which is what I'm actually wanting it for so off we go to High Hrothgar which is basically all the way up there in that that mountain there and this is one of the cool things with Skyrim the scenery is that's that's not a skybox that's not just a picture in the background that is physically there that we can go up and get um, and it's quite cool when we get up there you'll be able to see white run um, in the surrounding area because it's it's quite the view from up there however it does take a bit of time to get there and we will need to snake around the mountain because the path to get up there is actually frustratingly on the other side I mean I say frustratingly I'm pretty certain they did that on purpose to you know make you stick to the road well not even necessarily stick to the roads but they made you do it to explore so that's where we'll be going on with this. Just looking up and down a bit. I'm noticing on my recording software it looks like there's a little, little VSync issue, but I'm hoping it doesn't come through on the recording for you guys. I'm hoping that's just because I'm playing on one screen and I've got it set up for that, and then I'm recording on another. Hello, Wolf. We will take you for the leather because we're probably going to need that when we start blacksmithing things. And at some point, when I find some more steel, we will upgrade wherever she's got to uh, Lydia's armor as well. Um, but I didn't have enough steel to do hers and mine, and you know, I decided I was the priority. Oh, what's going on here? Oh, Hello there, fellow wonder. traveler. <laughs> one itinerant minstrel and wandering wastrel. At your service. So here's a bard that just wanders around, and he is a beast. As you can see, he's just fully taken on two fully armed bandits. He's just, you know, wandering away, continuing on his merry way. So we'll we'll let him do that. We won't interrupt. Another wolf here. Uh, where's my? There it is. Thank you. <laughs> that was weird. Why it didn't appear straight away? Right, and again, we'll continue on our merry way. So we've got another standing stone up here. Now I'm pretty certain we've got... Let me just check magic effects. Yeah, we've got the warrior stone active. So we're not going to... We'll, we'll swing by it, but we're not going to activate this one because we don't want to lose our warrior perk. Um, but what this one does is it gives you basically a necromancy spell that just resurrects all dead bodies around you. And there is a hey, an exploit that people can do with it. Oh. Nothing interesting there that you guys had. 
Funga Undying Ghost is an interesting tome. There we go. So it consumes all magic and summons a ghost for 60 seconds with its attributes equal to twice the amount of magic consumed. I've never used that, but I mean it's there. I think that's one of the Creation Club spells. Rose of Minor Restoration, we will take that. We'll take the Petty Soul Gem and leave you in the dirt. We're going to want those robes because we can, again, disenchant them learn that enchantment and put it on anything else though if we try and do that at the moment it's not going to be anywhere near as strong as what we'll find so this is one of the interesting i say interesting to my mind it's one of the slightly flawed bits with the crafting system in skyrim when you level up and you get those perks nice and high it's fantastic for you because the the armor you'll be able to upgrade is going to be better than anything you can find laying around. The problem with getting it there is it takes so much time to get it up to a reasonable level that most people won't think of doing that because just by playing the game you're going to randomly find better armor than you can craft. Which means you've then got to go, and the same with enchantments, which means you've then got to go out of your way to effectively um, all you've got. Yeah, you've got to go out of your way to level something up, which will make you better, but it's not needed. That's unusual that she came straight for me. They normally, uh... Oh, is this where that sword is? Yeah, it is. Okay, right. Well, let's do that on the way past. Clear out these towers for all of the bandits. There, so we're gonna sneak up here. I think there's an archer up here. We'll try and draw everyone. Hello! Oh, I was really hoping you wouldn't fall off there. So we will leave all of that alone. Although I don't think Lydia has a helmet, so we'll give her that. Okay, we need to do some healing. And then we'll go and take care of the rest of the men. Okay, back to Conjophilia. Oh, you have a cockpit, that's interesting to me. Okay. Run, 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 run. There's an archer. There you are, out here on this piece of... I mean, you're a level one bandit. There we go. Archer down. Okay. That should clear out the towers. And then we just need to go and find the sword that we can drop off when we head back to Whiterun. Alchemy Lab... Any interesting books? No. Chest there. There we go. Novice level chest. Nice and easy. Grab all of that. Upstairs. We've got a random bedroom here. There's a book. Archery. Always remember, take them, take them, take them, because you can sell them. Okay, um, big chest at the end, his family sword, circle of destruction, Karondaminga, Karondaminga, 
that could be useful. Okay, anything right at the top here? No, just cheese. Okay. So now we want to head back. I wonder where Lydia's got herself stuck. Oh, hello, there be you careful. are. Speak of the devil. Right. Now we will continue heading to Iverstead. After that lovely little beetle. Okay. Run, 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 run. And I wonder what other random effects we'll come across. Um, so yes. Circling way, way, way back to the uh, blacksmithing and the enchanting. They take ages to get up to a level where it's going to be better than what you find. I'm going to say out in the wild. Um, but they can be worth doing. I will probably do some stuff with that. I will very likely do that off camera to try and level that up because that's going to be very dull for you guys to watch because it's going to involve basically standing at the blacksmithing stone or the blacksmithing um, anvil and just crafting hundreds and hundreds of iron daggers until we get up to a set point and then it will be hundreds and hundreds of dwarven bones. From where I've been reading that is the fastest way to do it but it's still going to be a long time. Oh there's a flipping spider all the way over there in the trigger piece. Go on then Wolf. See if you can go swimming. That spider's not coming for me. I'm not going after it. But you know I'll take the boost for doing conjuration. taking it on. So, we're going to keep heading this way. There is a tomb up there we can go and grab, but I'm not going to do that just yet. Because that's a whole lot of side quest, and I really want to start getting to High Hrothgar today. Come along, no more stops. We need to find our way to Solitude. Why are we are even going, going to, to the right way to Solitude? Yeah, you guys are going in the wrong way. The, the, the sign says solitude's that way? Okay, you do you. Okay. We're heading this way for Iverstead, though. That's the wolf disappearing. No idea where Lydia's got herself to, but I'm sure she'll catch up. We just continue to explore fort there, we're not going to go near that, that's going to be part of uh, the Civil War quest, which <laughs> I'm in two minds to do, because it's not the most interesting quest chain, and so I don't know whether to just knock it all out and try and get it all over and done with fairly quickly, or whether I just try and intersperse it and, and spread it out against the more interesting bits and pieces, because, don't get me wrong, the, the Civil War is I'm going to say frustrating, because there's a couple of really interesting... Hello, rat. There's a couple of interesting missions in it, but the problem is you have to go and do some really dull stuff in between. Ooh, random fire! Whoops. Yeah. Why that not defend you? along and there's just some elf coming in. Where's the body gone? Where's the body gone? Well, that's not fair, I want to loot the body. There she is. Okay, that's been a feeling. Lost in the trees. I wonder what caused that. Uh, banded iron shield, we could give that to Lydia. Black mage robes, soul gems, soft sparks. Not worried about those boots. Speaking of my house, Carl. Hello, caught up finally. I'm right behind you. Right, I need to hand you some stuff. How can I serve you, my Thane? Okay, yeah, she doesn't have a helm at the moment, so we are going to give you that banded iron shield, just in case it's better, and then that steel horned helmet. Now, banded iron's 25, steel, okay, so that's fine. She's now got a helmet, which in theory, although we can't see it, Lead will make on. her a bit more durable. Right, Conjure Familiar is already beginning to get outclassed, so you might need to look at 
Next level, making that flame match an act cheaper to cast. Because, I mean, as you saw in that last fight, that wolf got one shot out of nowhere. Right, I have a step this way. Oh, a saber cap. You went down better than I thought you were going to. We will eat your eye and then skin you. Okay. Yeah, that went. Same cats were, from memory, a bit trickier than that, so I'm surprised how smoothly that went. And now we start winding up this cliff. I mean, yeah. Ooh, nice god race there. This is one of the things that is quite good with the what they've done with Skyrim with the random encounters, because you do just get that random stuff that happens to you on the road. I mean, I really wish I knew why that female elf was coming at me and throwing spells, but, I mean, you do what you do. The one that's normally a bit more explained is you occasionally get thieves trying to hold you up, and understandably, when you refuse to hand over your money or your goods, they uh, don't take too kindly to it. Though, do you know, I don't think I have actually handed money over to them. I don't know whether they do just walk away if you give them the cash. But, I mean, how about that for a view? And that's all actually there. Again, that's not a skybox. That's that's actually there. We could walk over it to exactly that if we just kept going. I have a step this way. Another saber cat. <laughs> That again. A bit grim with the squelching on the eye there. there go. But like I say, this episode is probably mainly going to be taken up by getting over to um, Iverstead, and this is this is why I opted not to do a a true full-on survival run because trekking and doing this every time I just need to go from one side of the road to the other. I'd imagine you guys get reasonably bored of that fairly quick. I mean, tell me if I'm wrong, but that's that was my interpretation. Oh, I'm sure there was a third one. Oh yeah, there it is. Because we'll just take all the leather. Continuing up this way. I mean, it's been reasonably eventful. Well, I'll admit, it's been more eventful than I thought it was going to be. Yes, all right, they've only been useful fights here and there, but it is what it is. Yeah. Goats trekking up the hill. I mean, this would be a steep hill. I would not want to try and charge up this in full plate armour, which is exactly what I've got my character doing. There's a cave. That looks friendly. Maybe we'll revisit that at some point. There we go. Keep coming up. Grab a red mountain flower as we go past, because we can throw it in some kind of potion concoction and see what comes out. And this is where... Yeah. The deer charging up. Again, wouldn't want to be following me in full plate armour like that either. Still heading this way, and that's a fake barrel. Okay. Oh, Skyrim minimised. No idea why that does that, and I know that's not just a me thing. I've seen other YouTubers get caught with that as well on their Skyrim, where it just randomly out of nowhere minimises itself. Luckily the game appears to pause when that happens. following the path, because like I say, the path is where random encounters happen, and so I'm hoping we run into something else a bit interesting on the way. What's this tiny little camp just off the edge? I will take a coin purse. Oh, that's here. Okay. Okay, yeah, sure, we'll take you two up. These treasure hunters. Where are you two off to? Your end draws near. Does it? I mean, you're running away from me. Okay. 
anything of interest. No, and no. So you might have noticed there was that little note that I effectively skipped over and it basically tells you, hey look, there's a treasure chest here that those two were digging up. Not a lot there, but it's only just off the path. Okay. We've actually... We've actually come around... Hang on, where's the path gone? Have I got myself... I've got myself completely turned around there by going... Yeah. I'm sure it's this way I want to be going. Just check the map. Yes, this is the way I want to be going. There's a dog. And, uh... Oh, Vigilant of Stendar. Vampire hunters. Well, no, no they're not vampire hunters. They are demon hunters. Ooh. Oh, they're Stormcloak soldiers, that's why. Who are you? You look different. Mercenary. There's been word of some trouble nearby. I'm on my way to investigate. I probably shouldn't tell everyone who asks. This is important business, you know. I could save you a lot of trouble. No, I think I got this one. Thanks, though. Okay. I'm not, <coughs> not going to try and intimidate a mercenary. That's just I think I think I've seen those before and they basically tell you like a little bandit hideout you can go and clear if you can convince them to get what they know. Right, so we were gonna do that. We're gonna go make some more magic. Going to Oh. Okay, hang on, where's Oh there's a press operation. Okay, 25. We'll hold on to that perk then for a point. Because then that will make our flame action act, you know, affordable. Okay, we are still heading to Iverstead, which is this way. Done an awful lot of sprinting. Now I think this cave here is a reference to, believe it or not, Winnie the Pooh. You know, the Disney character. Because it's meant to be a bear cave surrounded by honey. Um, and yes, there is a bear in there. And I don't particularly want to, you know, take on Winnie. But we'll s yeah, it's yeah, just an interesting little tidbit. W says I live uh, in East Sussex, and it's pre we're, we're pretty close to sort of where the hundred acre wood is, is based. It's based on a, the Ashdown Forest. I've been looking for you. Got something I'm supposed to deliver. Your hands only. Ooh. Let's see here. Ah, a letter from the Jarl. Moving up in the world, eh? Looks like that's it. Got to go. Okay, I know what that letter's about, so I'll just quickly open that and show you guys. But that one... Uh, Brawl, allow me to introduce myself. My name is Sid Gear, and I have the honour of being the Yarl of the proud and ancient city of Falkreath. And then I will let you pause it as I skip through the pages. But effectively, what that one does is that opens the Hearthfire DLC, um, where you can basically build your own home. We might get round to that. I don't know if I'm going to necessarily right from the word go. Okay, so we want to climb up to High Hrothgar, so we want to come over here this way to the bridge, and we'll find a lovely chap called Clement. On your way up the 7,000 steps again, Clement? Not today. I'm just not ready to make the climb to High Hrothgar. The path isn't safe. Aren't the Greybeards expecting some supplies? Honestly, I'm not certain. I've yet to be allowed into the monastery. Perhaps one day. Okay, I'll talk to him. Passing through on your way to High Hrothgar? What About types? to make a delivery up there myself. What types of deliveries do you make? Mostly food supplies like dried fish and salted meats. You know, things that keep fresh for a long time. The Greybeards tend not to get out much, if you catch my meaning. And in return? 
Well, it's kind of an understanding between us. I mean, it just wouldn't feel right to charge them for a bit of preserved food. Trouble is, my legs aren't what they used to be, and climbing the 7,000 steps takes its toll. I could do it for you. Really? Well, that would be kind of you. Here, take this bag of supplies. At the top of the steps, you'll see the offering chest. Just leave the bag inside, and you're done. Cool. And that's it. Be We're careful up there. You could ask about the risks. I'm not going to. I'm going to let you guys... Well, those that have played Skyrim know, but I'm going to let everyone else be surprised. And climbing up, there are ten... Because these are the 7,000 steps now. And there are ten of these etched tablets and monuments. Huh? Lydia, can you... Um, I'm not going to read them because they're easy to miss. And the only perk you get is that for a day, wild animals won't attack you. Which, yeah, it's not that great a perk. I'm not too worried about it. So there's... See if you have with most wild animals at the moment. Okay. Oh, this is going to be awkward. Have I already lost the path? Right. Yeah. Oh, this is going to be fun in the dark. In fact, I'm not playing survival, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go wait 12 hours and then it will be light for you guys to see as well. I mean I wouldn't do that if I were playing survival because I'd now need to eat and drink and everything afterwards. But yeah, doing this for partly your guys' benefit. But again, like I say, if you guys would rather see a... if you'd rather I turn on survival mode but then we've kind of got to sit through all the, the other bits, let me know. But I figured you guys would rather do this. Now, we're coming towards the end of what I'd normally do for an episode, but I'm going to run this one a smidge longer because I want to get up to High Hrothgar. So I'm going to save it when we get up there. So we've got more tablets, more guys up there. We have, and I'm actually kind of interested to see what it looks like because... This is the first time I'm going to have gone up there uh, since I've got, uh, uh, I think he, I think it's called JK, JK's basically, it's JK, has got a load of, uh, sort of, how do I describe it? They're not retextures, but redesigned mods, where he's taken loads of environments and basically redone them and made them look more natural, more cluttered, just, I'm going to say generally better overall. And you'll have noticed that we have the Riverwood Trader, we've got Whiterun, and I've got the High Hrothgar one, and I've got a lot of the other ones that's going around Skyrim. And there's going to be the first time I've actually gone up there and seen High Hrothgar since I had it installed. So I'm quite looking forward to it. Here we go. There's those walls jumping out at me. Where is my house car? She's not very good at stay keeping up with me at the moment. I wonder if when she does catch up, whether I've got a command that can basically say, stay closer. Oh, here we go. Right, climbing up the seven sounds and steps. Have you guys been keeping count yet? Because I haven't. I'm, I am genuinely curious as to if there are 7,000 of them. I've never counted. It's not something I've Googled, but I mean, Bethesda are quite good. I wonder if they'd have put that kind of detail in there. Although that just feel that does feel like a lot of steps, doesn't it? Seven thousand. Like, I mean, I count them with my daughter quite a lot, so I know I've got like twelve steps in my house. So to get seven thousand of them feels like a lot. gonna want Lydia for this next bit or actually let's try can I even oh, so I want that there that there how much of one oh oh 
but it's expensive to do the Atronach, but I think we're going to be better served with that coming up here because at the top, and this seems to be pretty fixed, at the top there is always, or at least every time I've done it, a frost troll up here. There he is. Oh god, that's level 22. Ow. Ow. Better late than never. Wow, that can hit like a truck. Okay. However, we can now get our Princess Conjuration, which means, sorry Familia, you're being retired in favour of that Atronach, because it's just going to last better, and put up a better fight. I remember the first couple of times I did this, I wound up skirting around the outside, to avoid triggering that, because I just could not handle that Frost Troll, I always forget just how strong it is. But I mean, of course, if you've gone wandering away and you've done all other kinds of adventuring before you try and do this, it's, um, yeah, basically not too much of a challenge. But for, for us, at this point, yeah, that could easily have taken me out. Genuinely surprised how much damage that did in, what, one, was it two swings? Just shows we need to get better armour than the... Well, I mean, we are wearing better armor. We've got our wolf armor now, which I think is just the equivalent of steel. But yeah, we're going to need to improve on that. And uh, then, not when I say improve on it, I mean get better armor, as in the tiers above, like ebony or, or you know, I've never managed to get the dragon plate. That would be interesting if I manage it on this run. But I think you have to craft the dragon plate um, and then improve on it by using the, the resources to up it like we've upgraded this to fine at the moment. So here we are, High Hrothgar. A lot more banners than I remember seeing. I don't remember that centre pillar being as tall. That looks quite cool. Those banners do look good whipping in the wind, don't they? Alright, and then we come up here. And we'll put Clemic supplies in here. There we go, that's that done. You can I think you can take them back out and it still counts, but I don't I don't think they're actually worth anything. So here we are. Hi Hi Hrothgar. And as promised, we'll give you the quick view. So, all the way down there you can see there's White Run. That's where we started the episode. Over there is Pleafall's Barrow, that very first dungeon we did a few episodes ago now. And yeah, this is where we are, basically at the top of the world, and you can see pretty much all of Skyrim, which is a lot we've got to explore. But this is where I'm going to leave it today with this fantastic view of Whiterun, so thank you very much for coming along. Likes, comments, subscriptions, they all help the channel grow, they all help get it in front of other people. Um, I've been enjoying a lot of the conversations we've been having at the moment in the comments, though I'll admit there's a bit more focused on the Subnautica one than the Skyrim one. But yeah, it would be nice if we could get it going on this too. So thank you very much and have a great rest of the day.